What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. This video is gonna be a little fun because we're talking about the new Blackmagic cinema camera, 6K, full frame, not a pocket. Very important, don't call it a pocket. Because you won't be able to find it online because it's not actually called a pocket. It's the new full frame camera from Blackmagic. Uh, if you've ever played with a pocket 4K, a pocket 6K, Everything about this design is basically identical, so we don't need to really go into that. But what we do need to go into is, I'm still undecided if we're gonna get one for our shop or not. Blackmagic rents out, okay. And I think they're great cameras on a budget. Um, but really, wanted to test out the new one since it is full frame and that's what everybody's shooting for the most part. So we just wanted to take this camera and this sensor and just benchmark it against a really great camera that also is a large format three x two sensor, the Arri Alexa Mini LF. And this is not to compare to see if these are, uh, one's better than the other. This is simply just to see how this stacks up in a multitude of ways against a really great camera's image. Now, that being said, the Mini LF provides things that this camera will never provide outside of the image, ins and outs, um, like Airy Raw, which is a fantastic codec, the ability to assign looks and different things and control multiple parameters inside the camera for a much more like robust professional set and workflow. This is not going to have a lot of those things, which is expected because this camera is only $2,500 and a Mini LF is not $2,500. It is in fact quite a lot more, but it is important to know that if you are ever shooting a B cam and you just want maybe a second little angle, could this camera work with it as a B cam, a C cam, a crash cam, whatever the case may be, we just wanna see how this stacks up. So we're gonna see some tests and we're just gonna explain those um, as we go through things. So right now, let's just start off with a simple Kodak test. So this first test is going to be just testing the codecs in their best and worst form. So the 6K full frame black magic, we're shooting at three to one, and then we're also testing it at 12 to one, just to see how much, in fact, uh, the detail is lost in the best and the worst codecs. And it's important to note on the 6K, uh, at 2398, in uh, three to one, you get about 36 minutes uh, on a 660 card. 660 gigabytes, and then when you switch over to uh, 12 to one, you get uh, over two hours, which is a pretty good margin of difference there. So on the Mini LF, we're looking at full open gate in Airy Raw, and at 2398, we're gonna get roughly right around 32 minutes on a one terabyte card. So if you do the math, it works out to about 21 minutes on the same 660 gigabyte equivalent. Now, if we look at uh, Airy and ProRes 422 HQ running at 2398, we get quite a bit longer than that at almost four times the amount and that's looking right around 72 minutes. Now, looking at both cameras back to back, honestly the raw codecs in their best form are great and so are the raw codecs in their most compressed form that they offer. Honestly, you're not losing a ton of detail even though one is 6K and one is 4K. Now, moving on to our next test. The next one is just a simple rolling shutter between both cameras. What we've done here is we've just done a simple pan on the tripod and then we've moved off the tripod and done handheld because there is a lot more motion transfer when you're handling the body directly. So we did a little handheld as well. Let's see those now. The only thing to note here that is to be expected is that the Mini LF has a much better rolling shutter performance. It's a larger camera. It has a lot more internals. There's a lot more processing going on. Not surprising. That being said, the pocket's not bad. It's miles better than the original 5D Mark II was and loads of stuff got shot on that. So if anyone's complaining about rolling shutter, I think way too much emphasis is actually put on rolling shutter. Cause in the long run, once you rig a camera out and go shoot with it, a ton of that doesn't translate to the final image and nobody watching honestly cares unless somebody's just there to evaluate your camera, which most viewers aren't there to do. So I think you're going to be fine. Even if you don't do the thing in resolve where you click the button and do the gyro, blah, blah, blah. Cause not everyone is going to have access to resolve. So, Great rolling shutter on the Mini LF, mid-grade performance on the pocket, but still completely acceptable and I think looks totally fine in pretty much every normal shooting circumstance. So on this test, we're just gonna look at a little bit of overexposure. First, just our normal exposure. We're gonna be focusing on the light in the background. And we're just gonna see how much we can pull that down just right at uh, perfect exposure for skin tones and see if we can bring some of that back.
And now what we're gonna try to do is just underexpose a little bit. Uh, we went to four, so we dropped two stops um, to knock that highlight down. We haven't changed the ratio, just knocking that down a little bit. And what we're gonna try to do now is see if we have a little more latitude in the highlights. We're just gonna see if we can gently maneuver the mid-tones and the shadows up to rebalance it out and see if this is any more effective on either camera. Underexposure. This one's gonna be uh, pretty straightforward. We're just gonna underexpose the crap out of this. Uh, we went from uh, a T2 at our normal and we dropped it down four stops to T8. And we're just gonna see how much we can bring back on both cameras, noise, look at all that, punch in, and just kind of compare the two uh, in that facet um, and see what we get. Next one here, sharpness. We're just gonna take the best codec and we're just gonna punch straight in on Galen and just see if we can notice any glaring big differences uh, from a detail standpoint, kind of center of frame. Obviously the lens is going to dictate some of the sharpness. So we're really just gonna pull from the center where we know the lens is performing at its best. Now we're just gonna talk about low light performance. Uh, the Airy has a fixed ISO uh, range, so it maxes out at 3200. So we're just gonna set it at 3200 and get our exposure back and kind of just examine noise, see how much uh, we get back when we clean up in Resolve. And then we're gonna go to the Pocket, which has a second base ISO of 3200. And we're just gonna run a couple tests there at 3200 and then one stop up at 6400 and just see how that noise and that look compares to what we get out of the Alexa Mini LF. The final test is going to be specifically just for the 6K full frame. And really we just wanted to see what the internal preamps sound like on this camera. Um, and if they're usable, if you're in a situation, documentary, run and gun, we just need to use whatever you can to get into the camera. So we just took a new Deity Theos uh, lav transmitter and receiver, plugged it straight in, and here's a little test. Audio test, one, two, three, testing the internal preamps of the Pocket 6K. How do they sound? Are they good? Are they bad? Do they sound decent? Could you actually run audio into this camera? Who's to say, but we're gonna find out when we come back. And one final thing to note on the 6K is the battery life. We started with a fresh battery and we started the clock right when we turned it on and we let it run until it died. We did some of our tests and then we just let it stay on and stand by. And we got roughly about, I believe 75 minutes, so an hour and 15 minutes on one of the standard little internal batteries here, which honestly I think holds up on production fairly well. Um, most times even like something on the Mini LF running a 155 watt hour brick, by the time you put everything on there, the camera really only runs for maybe 90 minutes. So it's not exceptionally much longer than what we're getting out of this with a standard. So I think it's a big step up from the original Pocket 4K um, and it can hang. I think it can hang. It's not terrible. I was expecting worse, so pleasantly surprised by that. Our good friends at Glazers donated this to us for this video so we could play with it and test it. Check it out, somewhere over here. Anyway, after playing with it, there's a lot about this camera that I really like. I probably think we'll end up picking one up here just off of this. Me as a DP personally, I think there's a lot of use for a camera like this now that I've seen what it can do against a really benchmark camera system. I think any more it's important to know that every camera manufacturer is putting out an image that looks great and you could screen on a theater pretty much anywhere. I think the big thing you're paying for anymore is a lot of IO capability and codec options. Um, and, and this really feels like a mid-grade camera for a low-grade price. And I think all things considered, this is a pretty solid run and gun, easy camera that could probably s satisfy a good amount of clients while also still being mobile enough to pack with you on family trips and take and shoot some fun stuff and kind of get some angles you might not get with larger camera systems. So whether you wanna use this as a main camera or use this as a second, third, fourth camera to a larger system, I think this would fit into a multitude of workflows and ecosystems. And now that 
Resolve makes things so easy to mix and match cameras and images and all of that. I really do think Blackmagic did a great job with this little camera. As always, we're hoping the next one is in a better shape. Maybe something a little more square, perhaps, with maybe some SDI capability? Everyone needs to get after Blackmagic and make them do that, because I think that's really the only thing that's missing from making this a really decent, great camera to be on a lot of productions. Okay, that's uh, our thoughts on the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame. Uh, thanks for sticking around and watching our tests. We found it very informative, and I hope you did as well. So remember, like and subscribe to our channel, and uh, hopefully next year we'll be back with a whole slew of fun stuff to test. There's a lot of fun stuff coming out next year. Can't wait to get our hands on it. Catch you next time.